and welcome back to this the final part of our exploration of bumps normals and displacements in random and for Maya. so in this tutorial we will be looking at vector displacement now we've looked before at standard displacement just using a black and white image which we painted we've done 32-bit displacement from ZBrush and in this exercise we'll be looking at a vector displacement. Now for those of you who don't know what a vector displacement is, it's not just displacing along the normal, it's displacing basically around corners. Now the first time I saw it, it looked like dark magic to me. Um, other people have described it as displacement maps on steroids. Um, but it allows us to do some things which would be impossible with standard displacement. Let's just have a look at the file which we'll be working with here now. Um, I want to actually open up a new file here. So if I go to File, Open, I don't want to save my changes. I want to be looking for, in my Maya projects, let me see, Maya projects, random exercises, ZBrush, and what is my latest date one? It is this one, okay. So here we go, looks similar, but it's a slightly different file. Um, in this file, we have an ear. Believe it or not, this is an ear. Okay, if I go to my geometry here and I turn my subdivision up to the highest level, we'll see we're actually getting an ear. Okay, let's turn off perspective there. I don't need perspective on. So, yes, we have an ear. This is the geometry which we've made from a very, very simple flat plane. Um, what I want to do first of all is I want to actually get this geometry back into Maya. So what I've done is I've exported an OBJ. I'm going to go to File and I'm going to import that now. So this is at the lowest subdivision level. Point myself at the right directory. And ZBrush. And it should be, let me see, OBJ. Let me see if this is the correct one. It should just be a simple plane. No, it's not that one. File, let's get rid of that. File, import, just one moment. Um, date modified. Let me see where we are here. This should be it. Okay, simple plane, excellent. That's exactly what I'm looking for. And we can just see there, it's a plane. Okay. I'm going to put in a, an environment light here. I'm going to put in, plug in our nice old fashioned EXR. So going back to my random exercises, my source images. I'm going to find my FIN4 reference EXR. Okay. And apply our standard map material for this object here. So as it stands, out of the box, here we go, we're just going to try rendering this and our expected result will be, it'll look like this. And let's try re-rendering it. Okay. Getting some strangeness happening here with the Maya render trying to start up. And close down it. This is an issue I get on my machine. Let's just sleep my... Okay. Right, launching rendering from here again, and hopefully, yes, we get a new instance of it starting up. And we're getting some noise here. And the noise we're getting is because of the number of samples here, 128 will probably give us better. Set it to be always on top, and re-render. Looking a lot nicer. Okay, I just want to raise the... Um, the window here for the catalog. So raise all and just drag that in here so we have access to that. Drop it down there, not much else happening in that part of the scene. That'll do over there, okay. So we can have a look between backwards and forwards between the old and the new. Okay, now with this material, it's default map material. What we're gonna look at, first of all, we don't need any of the attributes up here. We're only gonna look at displacement. 
we don't currently have a displacement map we can do some setting up for it so displacement needs to be enabled and it needs to be a displace and the displacement mode needs to be zbrush vector tangent because that's the way i'm going to make it okay now we'll go into zbrush here is our scene again and i'm going to go up to 11 as we have it here okay um looking at this it's a good example of why we would actually need vector displacement if i was to displace this using standard displacement methods i could only displace if i zoom in here i could only displace a point from here once using vector displacement we're basically warping the entire mesh to come around these corners so with standard displacement we can displace it to this point or this point or this point up here we can't do them all with vector displacement we're basically moving this whole mesh sucking in here and around here so it works with meshes which have been deformed not necessarily just random geometry but it produces a very very good method for producing concavities in displaced objects so let's just have a look at how we do this I'm going to do this slightly differently from using the Z plugin from using the multi-map exporter the reason being um, I've actually got a higher level of subdivision here than we would usually have so I'm up to 11 yes my subdivision goes up to 11 for fans of um, certain rock movies there um, the critical thing which we need to set to make all of this work is under our preferences we have a specific preference here which is the tangent flip and switch this is a setting which tells ZBrush how to export its vector normal or sorry vector displacement map there are three colors which can be used red green and blue which will be displacing in an x y and z direction so red green and blue could be any of those also they can be positive or negative also they can be working a left-handed or right-handed um, coordinate system so this is the particular setting three is the magic number for random and for Maya now if you are using other renderers you can actually check with Pixelogic the makers of ZBrush and they have a default scene which they allow you to export and it, it basically categorizes where the correct export settings will be it's basically a test bed for it okay now the way in which I'm going to export now rather than using the Z plugin here is I'm going to actually use this create and export vector displacement map here. The reason for that, as I said, is we have a higher order of um, subdivision than would usually be allowed. So let me just go and do that. Um, EXR, yes, I'm going to call this my new ear. Okay. Save. It's telling me to switch to a lower level of subdivision to do that. Okay, I must do that. Apologies for that. We always make mistakes. Okay, and now create an export. Vector displacement. My new ear. Save it. It's thinking about it and saving it now. I've previously set the, um, the size of the map, so hopefully that's coming through okay. I believe it'll be a 4096. writing that file I don't need to export the base mesh I've already done that okay let's have a look back in Maya in Maya where we plug in our vector displacement map is here under vector displacement strangely enough it's a file we don't need to filter it and we don't need to have gamma correction because it is a floating point okay my new ear exr open it hopefully it shows up here in a second which it has done okay and this is a preview of it here it looks like it should be working okay let's try let's get image tool back up here okay 
Let's try re-rendering it. Not expecting results yet, but it will re-render. Just takes a second to start up again. There we go, lovely, it's still a plane. Why is it still a plane? Because one thing we didn't set here, the displacement scale. In general, for displacement, for vector displacement, coming from ZBrush to Maya, we need to set the scale to one. And fingers crossed, hopefully some magic happens. Let's try re-rendering. And yes, we're actually getting an ear appearing here. Now, with this plane here at the moment, I haven't actually put in a subdivision. Oops, let me just go here. I haven't put in a subdivision um, attribute in Renderman, so let's put in a subdiv scheme. Let's try re-rendering. Okay, still getting a little bit of issue there with um, some tearing. Uh, displacement scale is correct. The other thing which I'm going to set here is I'm going to add an attribute. Okay, let me just see here. I need to add the renderman displacement attribute. And let's set this to four. Still getting quite a lot of noisiness happening here, but we are seeing definitely seeing that we are getting near. Um, let me just check a few other attributes which I may have to actually work with here. Underneath our render controls, let me look at my features, I want to turn on ray tracing and re-render. And, oops, shading ratio, quality. The quality needs to be set to one to actually get good results. This should actually help us. It's the decimation rate of the actual pixels. There we go. We're seeing much nicer results here. So remember, it's working with micro polygons. And um, if I rotate this around slightly, because the ear is facing a strange direction, let's rotate this around so it looks like an ear. And we re-render. And let's just move around here, re-render. So yes, we still have a few issues which we can sort out in terms of quality, but these just take tweaking. Let's have a look along here and we're seeing um, basically where we're getting the value from this is that we're getting true vector displacement. We're getting this curve, we're actually able to displace along this curve here. Okay, so that's basically um, vector displacement in a nutshell. There are some things we can do to tweak it. Um, I highly recommend reading the Renderman from Maya um, documentation as well. But that's just basically how to set it up, exporting from ZBrush and rendering within Renderman. So thanks for that. I'll come back to you soon as I can with some more tutorials. Thanks again.